Sean Hooks Newsmaker Saturday starts now. Thanks for joining us on Newsmaker Saturday. This week, we're going to talk about how to deal with the problem of homelessness. Many cities, including Phoenix, have long thought that providing a meal, shelter, and a bed amounted to compassion, maybe even treatment. Cities around the country have for years thrown money at this problem, frankly, with very little to show for it in most cases. If you take a chronically mentally ill person or an alcoholic or a drug abuser and provide them with just shelter and food, you're not really getting at the underlying problems that keeps these people out on the street. Only with a holistic approach can you treat the whole person and give them the tools to get back on their feet. And that, after all, should probably be the goal of any efforts we make. Three years ago, Phoenix Rescue Mission, they came to this conclusion, this exact conclusion, and it was a life changer. After decades of feeding and sheltering the homeless, they made a major change in their approach. And to talk about it today, Jesse Dallariva, he's a client services director for Phoenix Rescue Mission, and Alfaro Olivas, who was once on the streets. Thank you both for being with us. We appreciate it. Your story caught my attention. Thank you. Thank you. Let's start with Jesse. Jesse, ab about 2018, Phoenix Rescue Mission, which is down on 35th Avenue, Buckeye, somewhere around there, you guys kind of had uh, an epiphany, did you not? And tell me how that happened. Yeah, for many years, Phoenix Rescue Mission operated at an emergency shelter that provided people a bed, uh, shelter, food, hygiene, but then they would have to leave in the morning and come back for those services. And for many years, people uh, participated in those services and weren't getting better. They were receiving stabilization, but they kept coming in the shelter. They were still homeless. Uh, and we decided to change that, the trajectory of our service to really address the underlying issues that were causing them to be homeless. Addictions, mental health, health issues, emotional problems, spiritual issues. And we developed a holistic, integrated uh, residential program that, that short and long term to address those needs, uh, to really provide life transforming solutions to people with life controlling problems. Al Alfaro, uh, you were in this situation. You were out on the street for about a year. Yours was, yes, a, yours was a drug addiction. Was it meth? What was it? It was methamphetamines. Methamphetamine. On top of the, yes, on top of the fact I was on probation and uh, basically not wanting to go home. I, I want, I'd rather want be free out there doing my thing. On probation, was it difficult to try to find work? That was almost impossible between that and your addiction? Uh, yes, sir. I've, I've heard, not... yes. I've heard this story many, many times. In your case, what first brought you to Phoenix Rescue? Uh, what brought me here, honestly, was, um, I ain't gonna lie, my probation. Uh, they, want, they basically gave up on me and told me that I needed to find some kind of uh, treatment for myself, that way they would help me. Um, I had heard about the Phoenix Rescue Mission. And, um, when I first got here, I was skeptical about it. But once I got here, the fellowship, the dedication they gave to, towards helping me do what I had to do, um, just honestly gave me that instant uh, acceptance that I needed. Now, uh, Alfaro, the first order of business when you go in there is to get off methamphetamine. That, how, how in the world are, are they equipped to do that for you? Are they equipped to handle that kind of crisis? Um, they are. They actually uh, help stable you. You go through a wrap program, which basically helps you de detox at the time. It, um, how you want to say it, basically, at the time I came in, it was a 30-day program, and it helps you basically sober up to where you need to stay focused on what you need to do. And then, Jesse, when, when someone like Alfaro comes in and, they, and they've, they're dealing with an addiction, how soon after that moment of trying to get them clean for at least a period of time where they can think clearly, can you start to address other things? Yeah, so our initial program, like Alfaro mentioned, is called the RAP program. It stands for Rescue, Assess, and Place. The rescue part is that we bring them in, give them shelter, food, hygiene, clothing. We stabilize them. We give them what they need to you know, even begin to move forward. Then we assess them. 
Uh, what are you dealing with? What are you going through? What do you want to do? How can we help you? And then we uh, place them. Placement can be external placement into a better solution for them or internal placement into Phoenix Rescue Mission's Transformations Program, which offers uh, you know, two months to 12 months to 18 months of residential inpatient treatment where we can provide people like Alfaro individual counseling, group therapy, classes, healthy community living, case management services, medical services, mental health services, and really address uh, Alfaro's addiction, but uh, all the other problems that addiction, the havoc that it re uh, wrecked on his life. Right. And we're, we're able to tackle all those issues. And you're getting at kind of the underpinnings of why he may have used in the first place. There may be all kinds of reasons why he had taken Alfaro's situation, turned to methamphetamine. Yes. Yeah, we're, uh, through counseling, we delve into the client's past and trauma, and our professional counselors deal with that uh, through professional counseling practices, and we're able to help process that trauma and then develop new, better habits uh, and building blocks for success with our clients. I want to take a moment here. We're going to go to Linda Williams' piece that she did this week on this. Um, and, and I just thought it, it was really interesting. It caught my attention, and I thought we need to do a deep dive on this on Newsmaker. This is Linda Williams who came out and visited and took a look at what you're doing. Uh, this is Linda Williams' story. Some people living on Valley Streets may tell you they want to be here, that this is a lifestyle, a community, a family. Jesse De La Riva used to say the same thing. It's really kind of a coping mechanism because you're in that position and you have to deal with it somehow. Uh, but is that the preferable way to live life? No. De La Riva is now the client services director at Phoenix Rescue Mission, where they offer a comprehensive program for the homeless. Addictions, mental health, health issues, uh, income issues, vocational issues, uh, spiritual issues, emotional issues. All those things are things that affect a person deeply. Alexander Ortiz went from jail on drug charges to the rescue mission two years ago. He says it changed his life. I lost everything. Um, I didn't have, I wasn't in touch with my kids anymore. My parents, they kind of were fed up with the hearing the same thing over and over again. So I knew I needed to do something. Um, and I took, I took a chance. Group counseling is one of the many resources here. The men sleep here, eat here, and take classes. They also get support to find jobs, find their faith, and rebuild their lives. Everything that I lost that I thought I would never get back, like I've got it all back and so much more than I could have ever asked for. And you know, it doesn't matter how lost you think you are, you're never too lost. Linda Williams, Fox 10 News. Alfaro, when you listen to that story, is that you? You're just to a point where you've got to make a change. And tell me about how you came to that point. Um, honestly, I was just tired of being tired. Um, didn't want to go home. Uh, basically, couldn't go home because the police were already looking for me. So I had to make a change for, my, for myself because just like how Alex said, I lost everything, including my kids. Um, my family was really, uh, really giving up on me, uh, in and out of jail. So I came to a point where I, I, I was, you know, at that point to where I needed to be someplace I needed to be changed. Alfaro, have you repaired that relationship with your family? Have you put that back together? Yes, I have. Wow. Yes, I have. My, uh, I talk to my kids on a daily. Um, the beginning of the week, I go visit them. Uh, my sister and brother, I actually got a, br a better connection with them to where if I go visit them on the weekends, they'll leave me in their house. <laughs> they'll leave me in their house just to go do what they had to do. And before it wasn't even like that. That's incredible. So I, my, my family connection has built way stronger and I think more in depth now that I'm, I'm, I'm willing to put my, my part on to work. Okay, this is the chicken and the egg question. Um, does the person, Alfaro, I'll, I'll start with you on this. Do you have to get to a point where you want to make the change? Can, can any kind of social services make, get you to that point, or do you have to be the one to get there? You got to be willing to make the change. You can't have somebody tell you what to do, because then you'll just be here 
taking the space. You got to be willing to to basically put in the work and uh, make the change yourselves. Because in the long run, if someone's pushing you to do it, it's not really you. You know, striving for the the so basically the how you want to say sober, soberness or better life. And that's where I was at. Was I was I was ready to put put in the work, find my faith, and just do what I had to do. Jesse, you do have still that component at Phoenix Rescue Mission of taking people in off the street and just providing them temporary help. But that kind of can open the door, right? And, that, and that's your job to see if you can maybe help them slide through that door to, to seek a deeper level of treatment. Yeah, there's, there's three kinds of categories with that. There's people that aren't ready yet. Uh, there's people that are ready because they've suffered enough and they uh, want to change their lives. And then there's people that are somewhere in between. And places like Phoenix Rescue Mission and other social services uh, can provide people encouragement, motivation, hope. Uh, they can uh, provide them uh, a vision of what they could possibly achieve if they were to uh, you know, take a step and enroll and participate in services like this. And sometimes people need that uh, kind of motivation and hope to be able to take that step towards changing their life. Jesse, once you get them in there and you start getting into a deeper level of treatment through the Transforming Lives Center, that's TLC, that's the holistic approach we talked about. Do you have any numbers on how many kind of leave and then maybe come back later? Uh, success rate, do you feel like if you get them at that point, you, you can really help them? Yeah, uh, the longer you stay in our program, the higher uh, the rate of success is because uh, addiction is a addiction and these other life controlling problems are huge issues that took many years to develop and it takes a long time uh, and a lot of habit formation and counseling to repair uh, uh, the trauma that addiction and other issues like that have caused. So the longer you stay in our program, uh, the higher the success rate uh, with completion of our 12 month program being uh, a very high uh, rate of success. Many people that do leave our facility too early come back to us because they believed in the treatment and they've realized they've made mistakes by leaving and they want to uh, re-enroll in our services and you know get a, get a second chance uh, at changing their lives. Stick with us. When we come back on Newsmaker Saturday, we're going to kind of touch the third rail here about people who say they want to be out on the street. I went out there a couple of years ago, almost a couple of years ago, out near uh, the cash shelter in downtown Phoenix, and we talked to folks on the street, and we heard this over and over, that a lot of people wanted to be there. Is that true or false? We're going to show that story. It's an incredible glimpse into what goes on. We're back in a minute on Newsmaker Saturday. Back on Newsmaker Saturday, we're talking about the problem, the homeless problem, uh, not only in Phoenix, but across this country. And I want to take you back to a piece I did almost two years ago in downtown Phoenix, where we went out and talked to people who were living out there. There's a lot of, you know, talking to politicians and people in the uh, in the field of homelessness who treat people. But it's it's interesting to talk to folks who are living it and just take a look and then we'll rejoin our guests. In the hustle and bustle of the city, they almost become invisible. But just a few blocks down from Arizona's shiny Capitol Dome, you make a left turn into a four square block pocket of misery, a patchwork of tents and tarps, home to some 400 people. It looks like something out of the third world. At 69 years of age, it gets tough being on the street for the first time in your life. Glenn Marine lost his hearing aid somewhere between stays in New Jersey, Boise, and Phoenix. Well, I've been in Phoenix now for two days, but I've been on the street for about three months. He was an accountant several years ago and worked on a ranch. Now he survives on Social Security. He's one of many seniors out here. He won't give me a bed, so I end up sleeping on the ground. Where you guys going, eating? Some offer their names, others don't. They're on the street, you're out, you're on the street. How long have you been out on the street? 
tonight's my third night. What, what happened? I got it released from prison in October. Some are out of options. Others are here by choice. They don't have rent, they don't have utilities. You know, you don't have any bills. The majority of the people out here choose to be out here. Majority? Yeah. Do they work? No. Most don't? Most of them don't. They're, they'll just go around panhandling. How much drugs? Oh, there's a lot of drugs out here. Do you think that's part of the reason? There's... Yeah. It's a good, it's a good part of the reason. St. Vincent de Paul provides breakfast and lunch every day. Volunteers bring food nightly. Many credit Andre House for keeping them going. George Machat took a bus from Detroit to Phoenix to stay with family. Once here, they refused him because he has warrants. They was scared that they would be like harvesting a fugitive, which I am not. Is it dangerous out here? It's dangerous. It's dangerous. George, is, does this does this look like America to you? No, this this surprised me right here. This 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 shocked me right here. He never expected to see this in Phoenix. And what I saw here, and when I got here off the uh, Greyhound bus, no, this is not it. Down the street, we met Maria from Mexico. How long have you been living out here? For about a year and a half. What happened? <laughs> what what? How did you end up on the street? Um, my ex-husband sold everything and uh, cheated, and he threw me out. It is really bad. All the homeless is like um, criminals and violent people. We met these two women from California. How long have you been out on the street? Since 2006, off and on. 2006? Yeah. Is it different than L.A. here? <laughs> to me, uh, to me, I feel like it's worse because I ended up getting on drugs out here. But I feel like if I would have been at home, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't have got on drugs. No. What drugs? Fentanyl pills, thirties. Fentanyl. Crystal meth. Crystal meth. Crystal meth. One thing that strikes you: some of the tents are very nice. For many who spent years out here, it's proof that humans can adapt to anything. Oh, so I just put it up last night. This is my, it'll be my closet is it, bathroom. I mean, are you, are you comfortable in here? Yeah, and my bed is in there. She's been out here for five years. She says her addict husband spent all of their money on drugs. Did you ever think you'd end up out here? Yeah, there's a lot of people out here just like me, just average people that are looking for a break. She says she's troubled by the growing number of young people here. They say, I choose to be homeless. You know, and I asked them, I said, so your life has just started and you just give up. Why do they give up? Um, I don't know. I think here it's, it's a little bit glorified. I mean, and I have to honestly say, looking around the country, people here, the homeless here are spoiled when it comes to having what they need. You know, as far as the donations that come, you know, um, as far as, you know, hygiene, your meals are all provided here. You can't help but wonder, could it be you? Could it be any one of us? That point was driven home when I came across Gary Goodman. You're living in your car? Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting myself together and, um... You see, at one time, Gary and I worked together at Fox 10. The meth got me in trouble. The majority of people here are on, are on meth. Do you feel safe down here? Well, uh, weird, yeah, I do. Because they, they look out for each other, but it's like, uh... They like their own laws, their own, like, you know, standards and stuff like that. Gary believes that half of the people want to be here. They're making good money down here. And I think they're also because they're just so used to this this lifestyle. It's like either, I don't want to say it's like they don't want the responsibility of, you know, cleaning up and, you know, progressing in life, but I think it's just it's so, it's safe, it seems safer and comfortable. You get used to it. You get used to it. Well, um, Phoenix Rescue Mission has taken a whole different approach to this, and Jesse Dallariva is the Client Services Director for Phoenix Rescue Mission. Alfaro Olivas on the left. Um, got off the street after a year and got help. When you saw that, Jesse, just your reaction to that piece, because we kept hearing from a lot of people that night, people want to be here, you just don't buy it. Yeah, uh, people that are you know, facing the circumstances that those men and women are facing have to cope with their current situation. And uh, saying it's not that bad, saying it's, uh, like a family that it's that they're okay is their way of doing that but uh, it's dangerous on the streets 
Uh, it's uh, it could drain your life, your soul. Uh, it's not good for you mentally. Um, it doesn't give you hope. It doesn't give you a purpose. It doesn't give you a future. Uh, and uh, that's what we want for people that are suffering like that uh, to to change their lives, to move forward, uh, to be there for their families, um, and to be there be there for themselves so they can have a future and they can uh, you know walk in with with power and control uh, over their lives instead of uh, being in that situation where um, uh, it's one day at a time uh, suffering one day to the next uh, and you know living on the streets yeah and Alfaro you did it did you get to a point Alfaro living on the street where you said Hey, okay, uh, this is all right. I, I, and you learn, you adapt, you learn to live with it, you justify it, you say, okay, this isn't so bad, I can make this happen. I can use when I want to use, nobody's going to hassle me. Did you get to that point? Um, I could say I did at one point, but you can only get to a, a certain point and say you're comfortable with it. Because there's a lot of things out there that, that is not as free as people usually say it. So I, I was comfortable with able to use whenever I wanted to, but it was just a hassle of finding another place to stay or getting another hotel room or just honestly ha hanging out by the stores. I had, you had so many issues coming up that it was more stressful than it was relaxing. Mm -hmm. Alfaro, when you were out there, could you go to a shelter? Uh, because a lot of the shelters, you know, one of the rules is you can't use. And this is why some of the people are out in tents outside because they don't want to adhere to the rules of the shelter. Were you able to get some shelter, get off the street? You mentioned a hotel. You were able to do that? I, I, at one point I was able to do that. The people I thought were friends out there would usually get hotel rooms or something at least once a night, or I mean once a week. And I would be able to at least wash up and uh, clean up, you know, even though I had, a, you know, I had my family I was able to do that with them. I always never wanted to go home, so I always uh, hung out out there. Yeah, and Jesse, um, I just, every time I go out among the homeless and, and, and do these stories, I just am struck with the fact that, you know, they're for the grace of God, really. Um, there are a lot of people who are just really delightful people. They've got problems, and you, and you think, how did they end up in this situation? Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, they're not. There's a good. There's a large portion that are good people that, uh, you know, don't want to hurt people, but they have these underlying issues that are causing their homelessness that aren't being addressed. Um, and that's what and, you do uh, at, the, at the Phoenix Rescue Mission. That's where you guys got my attention because you've taken a completely different approach than just throwing money at it with beds or saying, well, it's a it's a housing problem. Giving an addict. Uh, a place to live and hang out is not going to help them fix their life. I'm sorry, it just won't. Right. It w it will uh, potentially uh, reduce harm to them. That obviously you would take living in a house over the streets, but yeah, it's not going to push them towards uh, real change, real change that can give them a full, purposeful life, rather than living in a house, using drugs, being supported by that, uh, by that system. Jesse, there is a spiritual component to what you do, right? Yes, we're, we're a Christ-centered, uh, uh, faith-based organization. And you don't cram it down everybody's throat, but it's kind of a, it, it is kind of an underlying thing that runs, a current that runs through this. Yeah, so Phoenix Rescue Mission is a faith-based organization, but you don't have to, you can be from all faiths, all yeah, backgrounds to right. come into and receive our services. And you don't have to make a profession of faith or anything like that to be a part of what Phoenix Rescue Mission is doing. Thank you. Thank you both for talking to us. I, I, I really applaud what you're doing there and continued success, Alfaro. It's great. You've, you've gotten your life together and Thank you're back you, with your family. And um, I appreciate what you're doing, Jesse. Thank you. Great to see you both. We're back in a minute in Newsmaker Saturday.